Hi folks and welcome back to Bitsay. Now, one of the questions that I get asked an awful lot is how to plan a hardline loop. Because you've got to figure out exactly where your tubes are going to be going from one fitting to another. Now that's not so easy if your tubes are rigid and can't bend. So how do we get around that? I'm going to be showing you a few methods that I use, along with some others that other people have used on different forums. So personally, the method that I like to use is CAD. I like to draw all my components up beforehand, model them in extreme detail, and then go put all my tubes in in a CAD environment. I find it much easier to work through for things like distro plates and other advanced features that I might be machining or cutting later. So that's not the easiest way to do it, but it's more applicable than ever now. Whilst I like to model everything from scratch to make sure that everything is completely accurate to what I'm making, you can always find files for these sort of things on GrabCAD. They've got loads of options for SketchUp and Autodesk Fusion and other similar packages. So you're going to have something probably available that's close to what you're looking for. Of course, if you're not going to be modeling everything up in CAD, you do have options. Number one being pipe cleaners. Now, seriously, they are really rather good at this. So I've taken two of these silver ones and then twine them together just to make them a little bit stiffer. And the handy thing is you can take them, bend it, and then they stay in the same position. So you, this is really good for working out exactly where the tubes will go. So let's take a look and see how it works in practice. Now this method isn't 100% accurate, but it does a pretty good job. You basically put one end in to the fitting that you want and bend. And then on the other side, bend again until they line up. So what you're left with is a rough path that your tube is going to follow. Now it's not 100% accurate, as I mentioned, but it's a good starting point. Now this last point is more of a way of thinking rather than an actual method itself. And it's one that I use in basically all of my rigs that I think makes it much easier. So the way I do this is by removing bends from my system. So rather than doing really complicated runs with the acrylic or PETG from start to finish and using no angled adapters, I try to limit to just having one bend like this. And then on either end, you can use angled adapters instead to make up for it. Now, this has a few different advantages. The first being is it looks really, really clean once you've done it. The second is that you can work backwards. So by backwards, I mean you make this bit here and here too long. Now, by making them too long, you now have the ability to trim them back and back and back a piece at a time. By doing that, you can make sure that all your tubes are going to be exactly the right length. So you're not going to have any trouble with, say, a tube that's way too long, doesn't fit, and it ruins the entire bend where it comes out crooked. So by doing it this way, it's much easier to plan. So one really vital thing to remember when you're planning your hardline loop is what kind of fitting you use and how the tube goes into it. Because believe it or not, there are different methods, such as this one and this one. They don't work the same. This one uses the most common type of mounting that you'll find in all the fittings that you're likely to use. It has a socket on the inside which you insert the tubing into. That means at the end of your tube you've got a part which goes inside the fitting that you have to remember to include. And typically that can be between 3 and 8 millimeters. Depends on the fitting that you've bought. So make sure you measure it and take it into account. Now this style differs because it doesn't have a socket. So that means when you've got this part put into the water block it's completely flush, so you don't need to take any extra tubing length into account. So in fact, you can measure directly from here to the other side without having to worry about any sockets or any mounting options. So that makes that bit easier for sure. One point that will massively affect the planning of the loop is the loop order itself. Now, one handy thing here is that it basically doesn't matter. There's not going to be a huge temperature difference between one configuration or another one because the liquid is moving simply too fast between the blocks. So it'll only pick up a couple degrees between one point and another. Over time, the whole loop is going to equalize in temperature and you're going to get pretty even cooling. Now, one thing that definitely is worth considering is the fact that loop order will change how you use the system, how it's made, how it fills, how it drains, and how you maintain it later on. So rather than focusing on the temperatures, I would suggest you look at loop order in terms of the aesthetics and the functionality of the system itself. How easy is it going to be to fill, to drain, and to bleed later on? Some loop orders are definitely going to be easier to work with than others, so really it comes down to what you feel comfortable doing. That covers the essentials for how to plan a hardline loop. 
Now, if you want to learn how to bend tubes, prepare different types of ones for water cooling, then be sure to check out our relevant videos in our water cooling playlist.